Hello, everybody. So this is reading class for Tuesday. We're going to be finishing a spear for Omar, which we started yesterday, and then we will do one workbook page together. So just to prepare, make sure that you have the reading textbook scans ready. As well as the workbook page scan, which should be in the same document. So we're going to be starting at page 312. Just to do a quick recap of the setting and the uh, the important terms to know here. So this story it takes place in the Red Sea, which, if you remember, is between the Middle East between Asia and Africa right here next to Saudi Arabia and it takes place in the coral reef and our characters here Omar and his brother Gomez and their father they participate in spear fishing which is basically an activity where you take a large spear and you capture fish so we know that Omar has a fear of drowning and he's been trying to overcome this fear. And the last thing that happened, he jumped in in the water and he was able to stay for a while and then he came back out and then it said that he suddenly felt very weak. And yeah, we're gonna find out what happens. All right, let's go, ready? 312. Again, if you wanna read alone, that's totally fine. You can pause this and come back and do the workbook page together. Before Omar even saw the motionless shadow, he knew that a shark must be near. With a quick glance, he scanned the water below him and saw that most of the fish had disappeared into the countless alcoves of the reef. That was all he needed to know. In one smooth motion, he slipped into the canoe. The shark slowly emerged from the deep water and started circling the boat. He had a huge, silvery, streamlined body, small murderous eyes, and a set of teeth that made Omar shudder. The boy leaned over the side of the canoe and looked frantically for his brother. The water was almost deserted. Only a few herring fish darted about. There was no sign of his brother Gomez. Omar scanned the water from the other side of the boat. About 15 feet below, half hidden by the protruding ridge of a deep alcove in the reef, he saw his brother. Omar's hand went to his mouth to stifle a cry. He saw that his brother's hand had been caught in one of the many clams, and he was desperately trying to free himself. Oh no. But he was already weakened by the lack of air and seemed unable to pry his hand loose. Okay, let's unpack a couple things here. So we got Omar. He's near a shark. He's looking for his brother. But his brother is basically stuck. His hand got stuck in one of the clams. Oh, how could he have been so careless, moaned Omar. He knew that he had only a few precious seconds to save his brother. There was a very slim chance that the shark might not attack if Omar could disregard him completely. He felt his mouth go dry as he lowered himself into the water. He did not turn his head when the shark moved in closer. Without any outward sign of his deadly fear, he went straight down. Never before had Omar dived as deep as that, and he felt as if his lungs would burst. For a second, everything went black before his eyes. Da -da -da -da. I feel like I'm watching a movie. But then he saw his brother in front of him. His body was swaying, hopeless from the terrible lack of air. His hand was caught in the closed jaws of the clam. If he had not stayed underwater until there was hardly any breath left in him, he might have been able to free himself somehow. The cocky expression that Gomez usually wore was gone. He looked at Omar with horror in his eyes. Omar acted quickly. With deft fingers, he pried the clam loose from the coral. He left it attached to Gomez's hand because he didn't want to waste precious time. He could attend to the clam when they were safe in the canoe, if they ever reached it. The shark, whose giant shadow had been hovering above their heads, swam toward them. 
Omar tried to ignore the shark as he grabbed Gomez by the armpits and started upwards. Suddenly, the shark seemed to look directly at Omar with his murderous yellow eye. He came in closer, almost brushing against him with his powerful fan-like fins. Omar's fingers began to loosen their grip on his brother and they started to sink. The water around them had grown murky with waves churned by the shark. If it was true that a shark might not attack if his victim showed no sign of fear, then Omar knew what he had to do. He tightened his fingers around his brother's arm until he could feel his nails sinking into the soft flesh or skin. Then he turned his back on the shark and began to swim upward in the calm, slow motions. The effort, took, the effort took all Omar's strength and courage. Only a few feet more and they would be safe. A few feet more was all that they needed. When their heads broke the surface, the shark came in for the attack. He made a sharp turn and shot directly at Omar through the boiling waves. For a split second, they were face to face. The shark, a dreadful sight with this huge set of razor sharp teeth. That is scary. In desperation, Omar took the last measure his father had taught him in an emergency like this. He let go of Gomez, raised his right arm, and slapped the shark across its pointed nose. Then he struck again and again and again. So Omar is slapping the shark. For a long moment, the shark seemed stunned and motionless. Then he turned about, brushing against Omar's face with his rough fins as he turned toward the deep water. Omar grabbed Gomez and pulled him into the canoe. Gomez sank to the floor, too exhausted to move. While Omar fell forward on his knees, his breath came in in painful gasps and his eyes felt as if they would burst from their sockets. For a moment, he gave way to the wave of faintness that washed over him and supported his head against his arms on the seat in the boat's stern but only for a moment. Then he felt for his brother's arm. He took a knife and with its strong handle, chipped away parts of the shell. Although Gomez winced with pain, Omar worked fast until he could press the knife in and pry the clam open. It's only a flesh wound and it will heal fast, Omar said after he had examined the wrist. He wrapped his dry shirt around it to stop the bleeding. His brother opened his eyes weakly. He smiled at Omar, and his smile was full of love and admiration. Thank you, my brother, he said. Thank you. Omar gave the makeshift bandage a last tug. Shh, he said. Do not speak now. You must rest. Suddenly, he felt very weary. His whole body ached, and his right hand was bruised from fighting off the shark. However, it was not time for him to rest yet. Slowly, he took the paddle and brought the boat in safely to the dock. The next morning, when Omar awoke, he found a spear next to his sleeping mat. His father stood looking down at him, warm approval in his eyes. Omar jumped to his feet, gripping the spear tightly in his hand. You will be a fine spear fisherman, my son, his father said. And Omar lowered his head, a great surge of happiness rushing through him. The end. What a great story. I don't know about you, but I really enjoyed this story. Awesome. We're going to do our workbook. So go ahead and pause this video. I you to try this on your own. I would like you to try this on your own. And then we will go over the answers together. Great. Page 124. Let's read the directions. Find the character from the story who fits the words. Write the name in the box. Omar's family. So we're going to be writing down, I'm going to write down the answers here on the notepad, okay? So let's do the yellow one first. First quote, it is not well to show fear, but also it is not wise to disregard danger altogether. Second, you will be a fine spear fisherman, my son. So that kind of gives us a hint. Who is the one who told the son that he will be a fine spear fisherman well it's actually in the last paragraph his father so we know that in the yellow box we should write omar's father all right green 
Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Another major hint. How can he ever be a fish be a fisherman if he's afraid that he might drown as soon as he's underwater for more than a few seconds? So thank you, my brother. Thank you. We know that Omar saved his brother Gomez. His brother opened his eyes. He smiled at Omar and he said, "Thank you, my brother." So we know green is Gomez. And lastly, red. Shh! Do not speak now. You must rest. Tomorrow I'll stay underwater for hours. So we know that Omar is trying really hard to overcome his fear of drowning, and he is speaking with. Gomez here when he is telling him to rest. So red is Omar. All right. Choose the correct character response. Number one. Omar's father was patient with Omar when he said, "So which one of these two quotes tell us that Omar's dad is very patient with his child? Is it, 'Do not worry too much, my son. Does that show patience or?" I want you two to go to the sea alone today. Does that show patience? That's right. It's the first one. Do not worry too much, my son. That shows patience. Number two, Gomez showed that he was boastful when he said. So the meaning of boastful, if you remember, is kind of like somebody who brags a lot and thinks that they're the best. Prideful. You worry about yourself, or. How about coming down yourself? So the first one, this one's tricky. You worry about yourself is basically a saying saying that you should mind your own business. Like, don't worry about me, just worry about yourself, mind your own business. Second quote. How about coming down yourself? He is kind of telling Omar here to come down into the into the water, right? Look at page three hundred ten. The two quotes are actually here. So it says, "How about coming down yourself?" So Gomez is asking Omar to come down, and then he says, "Omar says, 'I will, but Gomez, please don't take any chances. You know that father warned you.'" Then Gomez says, "Huh, you worry about yourself." And then he flips his hair. So we know that that's kind of a sign of being prideful and boastful. So we know the answer is, "You worry about yourself." All right. Lastly, Omar's father showed his anger when he said, when he looked at Omar with warm approval in his eyes, or when he said, "There will be no more fighting between you two." Yes, it's clearly the second quote. All right, guys. Great job. As always, that's it for reading class. Thank you for joining me here today. Have a wonderful rest of the. Day and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.